Hey there, welcome to our channel. In today's video, we're diving into AI generated alternate history and uncovering some fascinating insights. So without further ado, let's get started. So as we all know, AI is going to consume us all in a great singularity within the next five years, take all of our jobs, all of our creative outlets, and just auto-generate everything that we could possibly need or want. But before that happens, I want to see if ChatGPT has what it takes to basically do my job for me, write sort of uh, scenarios and scripts based on you know alternate historical uh, events. And uh, chances are the answer will be yes, absolutely, it can definitely do my job. I am uh, nowhere near confident enough in my own ability to say that I am better than ChatGPT or even remotely close. But let's see. All right, let's give a little bit of a softball here. Uh, can you please, you've got to be polite to the AI so that when the singularity does happen, you get favorable treatment. Very important. Give me an alternate history scenario based on Germany winning World War I uh, in less than 400 words because I don't want to be reading all day. Let's see what it gave us. In an alternate history scenario, Germany emerged as the victor of World War I, altering the course of the 20th century. Following their triumph, a series of significant geopolitical changes and transformative events unfolded. Emboldened by victory, Germany experienced a period of rapid economic growth and technological advancement in the interwar years. The Weimar Republic, okay, so we're just assuming that the Kaiser, you know, was still ousted. Uh, clearly, uh, ChatGPT is anti-monarchist, as we can tell. Uh, the rise of Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party, fueled by the humiliating defeat in World War I, was significantly curtailed in this alternate timeline. The absence of widespread discontent and economic turmoil weakened the appeal of extremist ideologies, leading to a more moderate political landscape in Germany. The altered outcome of World War I also influenced colonialism and decolonization. Germany, now a major global power, took a more progressive approach to its colonies, granting them greater autonomy and representation. This, in turn, inspired other colonial powers to adopt similar policies, accelerating the process of decolonization worldwide. Because, as we all know, Europe, and especially Germany, are very well known for their progressivism when it comes to approaching their colonial holdings. Very well known fact. Very well known. In summary, an alternate history where Germany won World War I would have resulted in a more prosperous, stable, and cooperative Europe. You know, it almost feels like this was written by someone who was just a real big fan of the Weimar Republic. You know, just absolutely loved them. All in all, uh, I thought this one was pretty decent. I'd say it got uh, uh, 6 out of 10 if I had to rate it. Uh, I guess I'm rating these. It, it was pretty decent early on, and then it kind of got a little weird, just making everything seem very uh, kumbaya in a World War I scenario where Germany had won, which uh, it just felt a little strange that now Germany is the uh, bringers of peace and progressivism across the world. Just eh, doesn't, really, doesn't really click to me. But anyways, let's move on to a different one. We gave it a softball. Let's do something a little more interesting. All right, let's see what ChatGPT has to say about it being discovered that LBJ ordered the assassination of JFK. In an alternate history scenario, it is revealed that President Lyndon B. Johnson was involved in ordering the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. This shocking revelation has far-reaching consequences, altering the trajectory of American politics and society. The disclosure of LGB Jesus. LBJ's involvement in JFK's assassination leads to a deep national crisis. The American people are gripped by anger, betrayal, and a profound loss of trust in their government. As a result of the revelation, LBJ faces impeachment and swift removal from office. In this alternate timeline, Vice President Hubert Humphrey assumes the president, tasked with restoring stability and healing the nation. Humphrey's administration embarks on a comprehensive investigation into the JFK assassination, ensuring full transparency and accountability. High-ranking officials involved with the conspiracy are brought to justice, facing criminal charges for their roles in the plot. Feels like a little bit of wishful thinking that 
the incoming president would just completely throw open the doors, be super transparent. Uh, I'm sure he would try and make a show of it, but, you know, around this time period, presidents and their successors weren't known exactly for being the uh, most transparent. I'll, I'll put it like that. So moving forward a little bit, the memory of JFK's assassination takes on a different significance in this alternate history. Instead of being a symbol of tragedy and loss, JFK becomes a rallying point for democratic ideals and a catalyst for positive change. His vision of a better America inspires a new generation of leaders committed to upholding the principles of justice, equality, and honesty. In summary, the revelation of LBJ's involvement in JFK's assassination reshapes American history, sparking a deep crisis of trust in the government. The subsequent investigations and political fallout lead to LBJ's impeachment and the rise of a movement dedicated to transparency and accountability. The legacy of JFK takes on a renewed meaning, driving a transformative era of political reform and renewed civic engagement. Something that I've noticed with ChatGPT uh, in this video that I've been doing, and then also in just other times I've screwed around with it myself, is they are very starry-eyed when it comes to basically anything. Any of these scenarios that I, that I give them, they come up with the best possible outcome to the point of absurdity. I think, this is just me, uh, speaking from experience as an American and studying American politics and history, when the US government massively breaches the trust of the people, it doesn't exactly work super hard to fix that. Uh, it kind of just becomes business as usual, I'll be honest. I mean, when was the last time you heard anything about the Patriot Act or the NSA? It gets brought up every now and then, but not all that often. And for sure, there was outrage at Gerald Ford pardoning Nixon so that he wouldn't be able to actually really be tried for anything, but I mean, nothing came of it, nothing happened. It just kind of became the norm, and people still don't trust the government for reasons like that. So, a uh, little, little bit of rose-tinted glasses here. I think it wins points for how in-depth it went. With I, I like the fact that it brought up Vice President Hubert Humphrey. Uh, just the fact that it brought in a specific name makes me happy because a lot of these can get very general and very hand-wavy, where they're just kind of like, yeah, it happens and it works and it succeeds. Uh, this one actually felt like it tried to really craft a narrative as to why things happen. Uh, but kind of like with the last one, it loses me towards the end. If I had to rate it out of 10, I'd give it a uh, 6.5 out of 10. Uh, I really liked that they brought up the Hubert Humphrey. It's just that it was really ridiculous with uh, how happy-go-lucky it was towards the end. All right, number three in less than 400 words. For sure, this won't be uh, entirely ridiculous. Let's Let's see what they have to say. In an alternate history scenario, the pre-Columbian New World witnesses the widespread use of ironworking, wheels, and draft animals, leading to significant transformations in the indigenous civilizations of the Americas. The introduction of ironworking technology revolutionizes the productivity and capabilities of indigenous societies. With the ability to forge and shape iron tools and weapons, ancient Americans achieved new levels of efficiency in agriculture, construction, and warfare. This breakthrough fuels the growth of powerful empires and accelerates the pace of technological advancement. The widespread presence of ironworking wheels and draft animals in the pre-Columbian New World also alters the dynamics of European colonization. The enhanced technological capabilities of indigenous civilizations lead to more equitable exchanges with European explorers and traders. This creates a more balanced encounter, challenging the narratives of conquest and exploitation that dominated the historical timeline. In summary, the alternate history where ironworking wheels and draft animals are widespread in the pre-Columbian New World brings about a transformative era of indigenous civilizations. The advanced technology and infrastructure foster economic prosperity, cultural exchange, and the rise of powerful empires. The encounter with European colonizers takes on a different dynamic, leading to a more balanced and mutually beneficial exchange of ideas and resources. I am not surprised. Uh, I did not go in with high hopes and it did not, I feel, even meet those hopes that were rather low. So I'm gonna 
try and briefly break down why this is this is not great. This is not one of the best ones that I've ever read. So, first of all, uh, they talk about these you know powerful empires that cover large amounts of area as if that wasn't already the case in many parts of the New World. You had the Incans in South America, you had the Aztecs in uh, Central Mexico, and they covered rather large portions of their respective areas. And I specifically said ironworking wheels and draft animals and not something like better technology, because that also implies that the New World didn't have some really good technology, and they really did. They had some great innovations in warfare, in construction, in irrigation. And so I feel like this AI is... Uh, and I'm not saying the AI itself is doing these things, because it's not. That's not how AI works. It's just predicting these sort of things based on the stuff that it knows from the internet or whatnot. I don't know exactly how it works. I just know that the AI isn't, like, quote-unquote, thinking of these answers. But what I feel is the most ridiculous thing here is the line, The encounter with the European colonizers takes on a different dynamic leading to a more balanced and mutually beneficial exchange of ideas and resources. That does not check out. Um, I don't doubt that in a world where the Americas has better weaponry through iron, uh, larger cities and thus more people and all that sort of stuff, I don't doubt that Europe would be more likely to try and trade or have lighter colonization or experience more difficulties in trying to colonize. Uh, I can't imagine that it would exactly stop them, though. And so the idea that Europe would just be like, oh look, new people, I'm gonna trade with them, like it's a game of Civ, uh, it just doesn't really, doesn't really check out to me. Like with the other two, it's all very rose-tinted glasses, starry-eyed, kumbaya, and that's just, that's just the norm, that's just the the MO for ChatGPT when it comes to this kind of stuff. But that was such a large portion of this whole thing. It really didn't bring anything interesting into the scenario. I was hoping it might talk about uh, diseases that would be spread from the pre-Columbian American natives to Europeans in this world where there's, you know, draft animals and whatnot. So a version of the America pox. But, alas, there was no such mention of anything like that. Uh, this gets a solid 3 out of 10 for me. Alright, we're gonna do one more. One thing I will say, though, about ChatGPT is it says everything with incredible confidence. Uh, I could not say half of this stuff with nearly as much confidence in my writing as ChatGPT does. I don't know if that's a good thing, but that sure is a thing that I've noticed. Alright. Here's one that I feel, hopefully, will give us something interesting to work with in less than 400 words. Certainly. In this alternate history scenario, the Paris Commune of 1871 successfully establishes a new form of government, fundamentally reshaping the course of European history and inspiring revolutionary movements around the world. Following the Franco-Prussian War, the Paris Commune, a revolutionary socialist government, gains control over the capital city. Unlike in our timeline, the Commune manages to effectively defend itself against the forces of the French government and foreign intervention. This victory strengthens the Commune's resolve and paves the way for the establishment of a socialist society. The Paris Commune embraces principles of direct democracy, empowering workers and marginalized groups to actively participate in decision-making processes. Communal ownership of resources and means of production becomes the cornerstone of the new economic system, fostering equality and social justice. The success of the Paris Commune inspires similar uprisings across Europe. Working class movements fueled by the Commune's example rise up against oppressive regimes demanding social and economic reforms. Governments in other European cities experience significant challenges to their authority as the spirit of revolution spreads. 
The impact of the Paris Commune's success is not limited to Europe. Its ideals resonate with oppressed populations in other parts of the world, particularly in colonies and imperial territories. The Commune's triumph serves as a catalyst for anti-colonial movements, leading to the collapse of some colonial empires and the emergence of independent nations earlier than in our timeline. The ripple effects of the Commune's success extend beyond political and social realms. Cultural and artistic movements flourish, embracing the principles of equality and freedom. Avant-garde art, literature, and music reflect the spirit of the Commune, challenging traditional norms and giving voice to marginalized perspectives. The international community responds to the success of the Paris Commune with a mixture of support and opposition. So this is, uh, <laughs> I don't, who would be supporting this? Uh, I, I can't, I cannot imagine there'd be really any countries in the international community that would be like, oh yeah, yeah, this is, this is fine. And I'm not saying that the Paris Commune would plunge Europe in the decades of war. Uh, I think that's a little over zealous, but I cannot imagine that the rest of Europe would just be, eh, eh, not a huge fan. They're fine. While some countries, particularly those with socialist leanings, which countries would that be? Uh, others view it as a threat to the established order. I think everyone would, yeah. The ideological divide fuels geopolitical tensions and shapes international alliances. As the Paris Commune consolidates its power and solidifies its revolutionary achievements, it faces numerous challenges. Internal divisions, external pressures, and counter-revolutionary forces test the resilience of the socialist experiment. The Commune's ability to navigate these obstacles and sustain its ideals determines the long-term success of the movement. In summary, an alternate history where the Paris Commune succeeds in 1871 sets the stage for a widespread socialist revolution across Europe and inspires anti-colonial movements globally. The principles of direct democracy, communal ownership, and social justice guide the Commune's governance and influence the course of history. The impact of the Commune's success is felt not only in politics, but also in culture, art, and the fight against colonial oppression. Uh, I guess before I continue, if you want to know more about the Paris Commune, there's lots of great uh, resources out there. Uh, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. But basically, it was uh, exactly as I've kind of been reading through. It was a socialist revolution in Paris in 1871 after the Franco-Prussian War. And it, uh, it was a really tragic and bloody failure and I gotta say I, I appreciate this one um, it has some quirks <laughs> I gotta say such as with a mixture of support and opposition I don't think there'd be much mixture there in their reaction to a successful Paris Commune uh, I you know I could nitpick it here and there like I am not confident that a successful French commune, if you know the Paris Commune were to take over all of France, would be exactly anti-colonial, because even progressively minded countries that have colonial holdings tend to not want to lose those colonial holdings because they mean quite a bit of wealth and power for that nation. But I am a fan of how it did focus quite a lot on the sort of mystique about the Paris Commune, and talks about how it would affect the consciousness of the working class people across Europe and the world and art and culture and all that stuff. Feels a little bit like we're writing a musical here, like Les Miserables 2. This time it's all of Europe. But, you know, I think this one, I, I appreciated this one. And I'm sure a lot of that comes from my personal biases because I find the Paris Commune incredibly interesting, but I'd say this one gets a gets a solid 7.5 out of 10. Uh, very, very thoughtful in a lot of ways. Not super in-depth, but in justice to this one and all the others, I did ask it to do it in less than 400 words. I just, I didn't want to read that much. Well, I guess that about does it. And that concludes our journey through AI-generated alternate history. We hope you found the video informative and engaging. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more captivating content. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed my video and subscribe to my channel with notifications turned on to see more of my content. Leave a comment with your thoughts on this video or topics for the future, and if you're interested, I've also made plenty of other videos, so go check those out too.
This has been Historical Hindsight, and I'll be seeing you soon.